to be over dramatic or anything, but the new Spark is going to have a tough time. Not only is it an A-segment car, which means it competes in one of the most hotly contested segments on the market, but it's also a Chevrolet. And that means it forms part of a model lineup that's responsible for more of General Motors South Africa's sales than any of their other brands. So, small car, big responsibility. We're in Frontshook for the launch of what all the Chevrolet employees like to call the hot new Spark. Although all of the badges on the car just say Spark. It's up against the likes of the Polo Vivo, so it has very tough competition. And Chev decided that one of the best ways to take on that competition is to, as they put it, break the city car mold. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to design something that looks a little different. I would imagine that designing a car that has universal appeal is a pretty tough job, and it might be the reason why some Asian cars are designed in Europe, and why GM decided to have this car designed in Korea. It now has the familiar Chevy face, and it carries off the cute city car persona quite well, but I'm not sure it'll be universally appealing. The front is particularly puzzling. It's all a bit oversized with a massive sort of underbite look to it. The best bit is the side glass aperture, which you can only really appreciate from a distance. It has a really nice sweeping line to it, although it does impact a little on practicality. I'll show you that shortly. Then we're back to the oversized bits at the rear, with the clear lens taillights, which are obviously popular in markets in some parts of the world, but they're not my favorite. It's not quite mold breaking, but it is a fresh take on things and not likely to be mistaken for anything else. So the outside is all young and funky, but the interior is very grown up. But that's not a bad thing because it means you get a good layout with decent materials and even some shiny plastic bits. But there is some oddness and it all sort of concentrates in this area here with the instrument cluster. It's a half analog, half digital, blue illuminated, plastic encrusted thing. That will take a lot of getting used to. I know they wanted to do something different with this car, but that funny looking unit just makes it look like they're trying too hard. Where the Spark does impress is with its use of space, especially in the back. It's more roomy than you think, with plenty of headroom. A lot of these types of cars claim to be able to fit five adults in comfort, and most of them can't. Now, I didn't have four other Oaks to fit in the Spark with me, but I would imagine that five up, the Spark wouldn't be too uncomfortable. Remember that side glass profile I was talking about earlier? Well, here's the downside. A massive slab of plastic on the rear door to help complete the outside look. Not ideal for those who like a window seat. And this is what gives the Chevy its spark. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. It's a 1216V unit with 60 kilowatts and 108 newton meters hooked up to a five-speed gearbox. Now, by the time of filming, Chevy hadn't given us exact figures about fuel consumption and emissions, but they do say it has excellent fuel consumption and low emissions. But of course, they would say that, wouldn't they? We've since got hold of those figures. The combined cycle fuel consumption is a measly 5.4 liters per 100 Ks, and the CO2 emissions amount to an impressive 129 grams per kilometer. None of which tells you how this Spark drives. As far as 1200s go, this one isn't a bad one at all. I mean, you don't really have to wind it up to get any power out of it. And the upside of that is that you don't have to endure the strangled cat noise that most of these smaller engines make as they approach the red line. The in-gear acceleration is pretty good as well, which means that downshifts for overtaking are a bit of a rarity. The little motor obviously has the advantage of being at a lower altitude for our test drive, but a quick word with one of GM's senior engineers revealed that the local boys had worked hard on getting the gearing in the Spark right. About that strangled cat, if you run the engine all the way to the red line, or the blue line as it is with this car, it will start screaming, but we found that shifting around the 4000 RPM mark gave a good power to noise ratio. This Chevy might be a small car, but it ticks a lot of big car boxes. Okay, you can't adjust the steering wheel at all, but the steering wheel itself feels really good and the seats are comfortable as well. The gear changes are solid. In fact, every interaction with this car feels really solid. Although sometimes maybe a little bit too solid. 
This Chev has a harder ride setup than you might think for a car in its class. Overall though, the handling is decent with good steering feel. As far as breaking molds go, the Spark doesn't quite manage, but that's not to say it won't attract some attention. 125,000 Rand may not be enough to buy you a carbon ceramic brake set for your Audi R8, but it will buy you a comfortable and well specced Chevy Spark. There are some styling and interior bits to get used to, but as far as a package is concerned, GM have created a real contender within the market. The 1200 motor had the advantage of being near the coast, but felt strong enough to be able to cope with most day-to-day -day driving. The Spark is a good package from a value point of view, and although it is rather unique looking, some of the elements will take some getting used to.